Yeah, bridging the gap. Naomi Banks, the goddess. Tune in. Hey, yo, Black, where we at? Elements. Mm -hmm. Got a problem? What's the issue? Ask Naomi for advice, she will bless you. Is it sex, love, or relationships? If your spirits are down, you can get a daily uplift. Just listen every word that she speaks. Setting trends with hashtags for every day of the week. Hashtag make All right, all right, all right. It's your girl, the goddess Naomi Banks, and welcome to another episode of Ask Naomi Bridging the Gap. This is where we talk about love, sex, relationship, cultural differences, and so much more while bridging the gap between them all. And educating the world on sex, love, language, attitude, and spiritual uplifting. And today's topic, we're talking about aphrodisiac. What is the turn you on? And what you making me for dinner? <laughs> you ready for this, Dr. Pound Mike Mike? Let's do it. Aphrodisiac. All right. All right. So let's go pay a little bills here with uh, Sexy Ears Cosmetics. And then we're going to come back and we're going to talk a little bit about aphrodisiac. We're going to talk about the real, the myth, and all that comes with it. All right. Sexy Ears Cosmetics. Hey, it's your girl, the goddess Naomi Banks, and Sexy Is Cosmetic is our official sponsor here at Ask Naomi Bridging the Gap. So you guys make sure you go by sexyiscosmetic.com and let them know Naomi sent you. Get a great discount. They are naturally 100% organic, vegan. They sell everything from soap to scrubs to everything for you to keep you sexy always. Sexy is cosmetics. Use the code Ask Naomi for a 10% discount. All right, Sexy is Cosmetics. Thank you. That is what I use on my glowing skin here. The Choco Bar is so, so good for me. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. But like I said before, we're talking about aphrodisiac. But before we start talking about that, let me introduce you to my co host the man from the streets. <laughs> wow. It's just going to give you the real, the raw, and the uh, cut. Dog pound, Mike, Mike, what's going on, baby? What's happening? What's happening, Naomi? Are you, you, um, are you ready for this? You was you was excited about that last show last oh, week. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You was all up in there like, hey, oh, yeah. yeah. You was getting it in with the twins and all. <laughs> <laughs> but you ready for this because I'm a big foodie. And okay. I love food. All right, so let me tell you how this, this topic came up because I um, went through, you know, me taking my uh, my class and getting certified. Aphrodisiac is one of the courses that, you know, we had to take. Okay. And so in, when, in taking this course, I learned so much, so much more about aphrodisiac and what it really do with the, the chemical balancing of your, your brain and, you know, that it releases, you know, certain things when you eat certain things and stuff like that. So I thought the best way is to share it with my beautiful people out there. You know what I'm saying? And how we can have fun with it, you know, some kind of mess with it and everything like that. So you ready for that? Let's do it. Let's do it. You ready? You ready? All right. So um, let me, let me say this. So my aphrodisiac, what I love to eat, especially when I'm ready or get a little horny, is olives and oysters. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, the oh me orgasm. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh! I didn't think about that one. Oh, like them oh, oh! I didn't think about that one. All right, so if, if you guys don't know what the meaning of aphrodisiac is, I'm, I'm about to give it to you. I'm gonna give it to you two ways. I'm gonna give yeah, it to you the way the way they say it. You know, um, I don't want to say political way, but as the professionals would say, it is a substance um, imbibed and ingested for the purpose of increasing libid libidinal pleasure your libido. Mm -hmm. And I say your food, drug, or drink that stimulates your sexual desires. 
Mm. That is what it means. But what I did learn within a course is that there are two type of classes of aphrodisiacs. Okay. Because usually when you say aphrodisiac, people usually mean something um, of eating. Right. You know, something like that, you know, from that. But what I found out that there's actually two different classes. So there's, let me tell you who, there's two classes. One is class, class one is the phys, the psycho, phys, physiologically. That's one class. <laughs> and then class two is with internal. So what I want to do is I want to break it down real quick for you guys. And then we're going to do it this way. Let me say. All right. So why they separate the two is because one is general food, as I said. Okay. And then for starters, it's because one is about, it's about sex. So the relationship to sex and the content, context and the intent are about to be revealed in all of these things that I'm about to talk about okay. right now. So it's different things that get certain things you can kind of rammed up and going. When I decided to do this topic, I'm like, oh my God, it's really so much more. Even that I'm not even going to talk about in this show because we're talking about enablers and reaction. When I say it gets really deep down, but then you start to understand more on what fools do for you <laughs> and what they don't do for you wow. and health wise and like all kinds of stuff when it comes to sexual, like seriously. And I'm talking about spiritual, like, er, like literally literally but i think we're gonna have fun with this i know we're gonna have fun with. we're gonna have fun with this but all right so let me do class one all right so the most powerful aphrodisiacs work on both physiologically and psychological levels all right the smell of jasmine per, uh, perhaps a physiological aphrodisiac which also could bring you back to a physiological that that will remind you of a night that you made love in a garden of jasmine so with that, with class one, it's more of a remembrance thing. So it's like, okay, say for instance, I just got off of a really great uh, podcast with Thick, um, Thick Girl Thursday with Miss Frankie Robinson out there in Chicago. Y'all make sure y'all check it out. But she had asked me what was the most naughtiest place that I, you know, had sex with, you know, and I said I was on the side of a Rocky Mountain. So <laughs> my memory will get, it was snowing us. <laughs> So that fresh snowing scent would actually turn me on. You understand what I'm saying? So it's like it kind of like switch on that memory bank in your head. So that comes from like different kinds of smells or anything like that. So here it is. Let me say them. Things would bring you back memories of pleasant and pleasurable events. Okay. Like I said, yeah. Yeah. Uh, ideas which you find exciting, such as fantasies. Being made to feel important or special or wearing sex, sexy clothes. So I'm going to break it down to you like this, too. So it's a visual. Okay. It's a tactile. It's a, a olfactory, which is the scent. And oral, which is the sound. And I should say the tactile is the touch. The visual is the sight. So that's where in class one day it goes more on that. And it's not an internal thing. It's more of an outer. So if you look at a man and you say, you know, he looks beautiful or you know it's a reminder of something that is a sexual desire of you you understand what i'm saying okay. a tactile is a touch so say if somebody touched you somewhere and it's a reminder and it makes spot. you tingle yes and it makes you tingle then that's that class one all right and then the all factor is the scent which i definitely can because i love a good smell of man i mean literally when i smell a man and he smells so good it does make it kind of tingle down there, a little purring a little bit. And then the sound. All right, so I'm going to be truthful. There's this young guy that's up in my DMs, but he's a really cool sweetheart. His voice is just like, oh, oh, it's just like, ah, oh. like it, it makes me shiver. Like that's somebody you can get it like that deep. You got one of Barry White. Right? It's almost like Barry White, but it ain't Barry White, but it's him. It's, it's just him and his voice. And I'm like, oh, that that voice right there will get somebody in trouble. You understand what I'm saying? So that's class one. So class two. Class two is what I think is fun because this is all got to do with food, especially when I'm a foodie. I am such a foodie. So it's called eternal and that's class two. So it's food, alcohol, drinks, love potions, and medical preparations. And I know y'all want to whisk is medical preparations. We're talking about like Viagra or something like that. <laughs> to help, 
Is that that Bill Cosby shit? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Is it too late for me to beat that out? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let, let me say. <laughs> okay, so let me say this. Let me let, let me say this. Um, it was funny because we had this conversation earlier this week. Because I had one, and I, I wanted to wait because I said I was gonna come back to this. And, and do a show particularly on this because we talked about something with with all of this bill cosby thinking we want to kind of like flip it or whatever but when i don't know if y'all watch the bill cosby special <laughs> and literally and, and literally uh no we're not getting ready to do that here yeah, no we is, we're not going i can't believe that you did that it's a different show it's just like is that but it's it stuff like that part of... But you know, yeah, okay, so let me say this, right. because a, a part of one of his acts, he was always talking about the Spanish fly. Right. Which, let me go from here, it says that when it comes with, according to the experts, that's one of the top eight uh, most popular aphrodisiacs yeah, that got, they have out there, know. is mm -hmm. the, the Spanish fly. But you just jump the bug, you don't have to put Bill up in there. Bill don't have to come over here. I, I just need to know what that, I'm going to go on Amazon and see if I can order me some. You can't. <laughs> you can't. You cannot. You cannot. All right. So, with the experts says that, that I'm just gonna give you the common ones that the experts say that what it is. And so, these are the top eight things that they said. They said rhino horn. And I'm gonna explain to you what rhino horn is. Now, that's something when I saw that, I was like, what the hell is a rhino? Like a a real rhino, rhino horn. Okay. It said although it's one of the oldest recorded aphrodisiacs. You can't and shouldn't buy it. It's illegal to hunt rhinoceros, and they are endangered species. Okay. The hunt of these animals is funded by illegal poaching and roads that confiscated rhino horns visually display their demand, but also the risk of wildlife and conservation. So, but I'm thinking like, who gonna go risk their life to go get that just to get a hard horn? But you know, they probably they probably hunt rhinos just like they are hunt elephants and mm -hmm. things like that mm -hmm. and sell them out on the black market mm -hmm. i bet on the black market you probably can get stuff like that you know people in africa that they, they poach it they out there trying to hunt that stuff and probably make big money off of them. right they do but listen y'all don't do that like for real for real why are you looking at me looking at me like oh, i'm going to give me something tonight no 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 <laughs> i ain't gonna go hunt no rhinos tonight but, no 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 Okay, and the second one is Spanish fly. All right, so let me let me go back. So Bill Cosby kind of used that in in his um the, the beginning of his career. Right. The beginning of his career, he kind of used that as a joke, as saying that um you put the little fly in somebody's drink or you give it to them or whatever, and it kind of make them you know turn them on and crazy. Which is true. I remember as a little girl, I used to hear about Spanish flies, and I think maybe walking past a Bill Cosby while my grand my, my mother and father was uh, my parents were watching TV or my uncles or somebody was watching TV. And probably overheard him right. speaking about Spanish flies. And that was some Porky movies. Remember the Porky movies mm -hmm. that they used to have? So the Spanish flies like that, you know, whatever. But this one, this is illegal. Like Spanish flies is illegal in the USA, but you could get it in some different places. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's painful, dangerous, and deadly. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess that's where they have them in a, in a comatose. See, now we about to go somewhere else with this. But Spanish flies. That's another one that they say that the expert said is of an aphrodisiac. Okay. All right, alcohol. Alcohol is one of our favorite things mm -hmm. to drink when it comes down to aphrodisiac. Like, for instance, my thing is tequila mm -hmm. and wine. Tequila yeah. and wine. That would ease me off and, you know, you know, kind of, you know, keep me nice and smooth and ready, you know, to go on top of the olives. In <laughs> oysters, <laughs> so, so, so nice martini with some with some. Olives. So you just put the martini in there. I didn't even put the martini in there. I said the wine. I didn't. I didn't put no martini I, in there yet. I'm taking notes. Trying to get a whole package together. <laughs> since, since you say I can't get no, I'm trying to get a whole package together. <laughs> I need to know what go what, what go with this uh, order, you know. Right, right, right. But with alcohol is another one of them. Let me. I'm gonna keep going down for y'all. Chocolate, 
chocolate is an aphrodisiac as well. For me, it's not. Um, maybe because I am all chocolate. <laughs> For me, it's not. But I've heard, and even, you know, with me asking a lot of people, chocolate is, you know, is a part of the aphrodisiac, right, I guess right. the sweetness or anything like that. So what it says is chocolate makeup hits the same brain, brain pleasure center as orgasm. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. When a person eats chocolate, that part of their brain that feels sex is triggered. Okay. It's triggered. So y'all out there, that love, I, I understand it. Y'all about to go buy some chocolate bars. Guess mm -hmm. what? I'm about to start selling some uh, some chocolate candies. I don't know what I'm going to call them yet. But I'm about to start selling some chocolate candies with some nuts in or pecans. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just saying. All right, next one is oysters. Oysters is something that I love. I actually have some oysters right here. Look, I'm trying to open it. Yes, right here. I got it. I'm not going to eat them. Or, oop, I'm not going to eat them today. Because I didn't, I didn't, um, I didn't put them on a grill. But I can't do no oysters. Oh, oh, I love oysters. And you put some Portis, what's the name, and some hot sauce in it, and you take it back to the head like this, and you slurp it up. <laughs> if you out on a date with me and you gave me some oysters, I know what's about to happen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, so I think everybody just got visible when you said. <laughs> you slurp it, and take it back to the head. <laughs> You know, for this is that this is actually great for somebody that has zinc deficiency. Um, the oysters, a similar shellfish, it would send a nice little buzz through your body okay. when you you know eat that, and it's healthy. Um, and it, it it will definitely boost your sexual drive. Okay, so um, yo hemabine, yo hemabine, and I'm hope I'm, I'm saying it right, so I'm gonna spell it for you. That's Y O H I M B I N E, and and, and this is great for men. It says a clinical trial showed that it has the potential to restore erection in men. Who experience psychogenic and physical impotency. And I hope, yes. That's a whole lot of shit. Yeah, it says success rate for this is higher than one third of the population who uses it. Okay. Yeah. And as you can find this in Africa, this is an African bark. Okay. Yeah, this is an African bark. So, you know, for all of you out there that are a little older, I ain't gonna say older because I'm, because hey, I'm just saying, but you know, this not. Work in the way that you do, find that. And then actually, what I'm gonna do is I'll probably come back and put it down on the um a I'm note, yeah, on a note for it so you guys can see it and, and check it out. But this is one of the ones that they say that is of a common okay. of a common aphrodisiac for it. Uh actually it says it increases experience of 90% increase in sexual desire in less than one hour. Is that better than Viagra? I don't know. They say Viagra would hit quick, but I don't know. I have to find some of that. Right. All right. So here's another one. And let me tell you why this one really is called um, Mandrake. You heard of that before? No, I haven't heard Mandrake. of it. Mandrake. Um, it's a strangely, it's a human in appearance. One of the more sexual histories of the Mandrake root is that it grew from the ground beneath a hanging man who, upon death, released the semen into the earth. But guess what? There's a scripture in the Bible about this very, this very aphrodisiac. Wow. Yeah. Y'all ready to read? About to go to church for a quick we'll second. To About to go to church for a quick, quick second. All right. Yeah. Oh, for real. But when I read that and I was like, are you, are you kidding me? <laughs> are you kidding me? But this is what it says. It says in Genesis uh, 30 verses 14 through 17, it says, and Reuben went the day in the days of the wheat harvest and found mandrakes in the field and brought them unto his mother Leah. Then Rachel said to Leah, give me, I pray thee, O thy son mandrakes. And she said unto her, it is a small matter that, that thou hast taken my husband and wouldn't then take away my son's mandrakes also. And Rachel said before, therefore he shall lie with thee tonight for thy son's mandrakes. And Jacob came out of the field in the evening, and Leah went out to the field to meet him and said, Thou must come in unto me, for surely I have hired thee with my son's mandrake. And he lay with her that night. And God hear it unto Leah, and she conceived and bore Jacob the fifth son. I 
don't even want to say that. I don't even want to say that about getting busy in the Bible. But I'm seriously, well, I'm, I'm telling you, let, let me let me say this. Because it was said to me, you know, Naomi, you don't need to be going to no class, getting no, no school or no courses, get certified on sex, because you know that you've been in the sex industry for I don't know how many years. Right, right. You old as hell, you grown as hell. But then there are some things that I do really want to know. And this was like, when I saw this, I was like, wow. Like, I didn't, like, you know, you read the Bible and you look in the Bible and you just don't coincide and put things in, you know, in order, you know, of things. You just, you don't, you just don't. You know something? I'm going to say something, but this might be a whole nother topic for a whole nother show. Okay, go ahead. And it's about the, the Bible people, people that in the religion Bible, and they so critical of sex workers, you know, but when you read the Bible, it's it, it, right, the only verse in the Bible when they talk about sex and procreating and, and getting it on, mm -hmm. you know, so I don't understand how the translation, like I said, this is a probably a whole nother show. Yeah, this is a whole nother show. from, you know, people who read the Bible, like sex is bad, you know? But see, and that's why I created Ask Naomi right. Bridge and Gap, you know, so we can, you know, from the spirituality, from the sexuality, all of that, you know, blends and mixed in. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but yeah, that was in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, and the last one, and this is, I heard this, and I, I think I even take... Remember the little things, the little bottles or whatever? Mm -hmm. Ginseng. Mm -hmm. Ginseng is one of the most renowned Chinese herbs for increasing sexual vitality. Um, have you ever taken ginseng? Yeah, that's a good one. They used to sell a little, um, you know, the little bottles, you know, you know, everywhere in the places and stuff like that. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it takes weird. It takes, you know, funny. But it's all over. Ginseng is all over. Yeah. Yeah. All over. Always have been. Always have been. So that is what the professional say is. But we're going to deep down south because I got a whole platter of some great, great aphrodisiacs and some of my favorites. Um, yeah, we're going to go. We're going to go into it. But first, we're going to take a quick break. And then we're going to come back because guess what? I got what I call three stages, the three elements of aphrodisiac. You ready for this? All right. This is Sexy Is Cosmetic on the break right here. This is your girl Naomi Banks here on Ask Naomi Bridging the Gap. Hey, it's your girl the goddess Naomi Banks. And Sexy Is Cosmetic is our official sponsor here at Ask Naomi Bridging the Gap. So you guys make sure you go by sexyiscosmetic.com and let them know Naomi sent you. Get a great discount. They are naturally 100% organic, vegan. They sell everything from soap to scrubs to everything for you to keep you sexy always. Sexy is cosmetics. Use the code Ask Naomi for a 10% discount. All right, all right, all right. Thank you for tuning in here to Ask Naomi Bridging the Gap podcast. I am Naomi Banks and I'm here with my boy, Dog Pound Mike. Mike, what's going on, baby? What's happening? What's happening? How you feeling this topic today, baby? I'm feeling real good once I get some Aphrodisiacs you got on there. <laughs> <laughs> feeling much better later on. Feeling much better later on. All right, so what I have learned is that they break it down in three different stages, or what I say, elements. They break it down into. So here's what is flirt, seduction, and performance food. So it's three different stages. So with the flirt, the flirt foods is what is going to imply sex and sick, send blood to the groan area. The mm. groan area. The groan. The groan. Gro you know what I'm trying to groin, say. Yeah. Groin. The groin area. The seduction foods is they stay with the genital looking energy supplying stimulants, you know, like um, like banana, mm -hmm. like the oysters because it looked like you know pussy, mm -hmm. you know you know what i'm saying and the performance food they keep the energy on the input and choose the light and if you're humping you want to maintain a comfortable belly of low density foods okay. so i'm gonna give you all of that so if you guys decide that you want to bring some food which i really believe that it makes it so much sexy that you bring food into your bedroom and to, to heighten it up it makes it, it it makes it so much fun it really would do. All right, so we're going to do flirt seduction. I'm going to give you the foods. I got a pen to write this down. Get some pens and a piece of paper and write this down because I'm giving you something. I'm giving you something for you men out there and for you ladies out there. I'm giving you something right now. These are flirt foods. Y'all ready for this? These are flirt foods. And I'm going to tell you why these are flirt foods. 
chili peppers. Mm. Chili peppers. It flushes the face, gets the heart pumping, pours sweaty, and blood flowing towards the gentleness. The gentleness down there. Mm. Do okay. you eating uh, hot peppers? What did it do for you? You know, some, I like hot, spicy food. I like hot, mm -hmm. spicy food. And you know something? I mean, hmm, I never play if it stimulates me or not, but that makes you think about it. You know, that makes you think about it next time you have some spicy food or some chili peppers like that if you feel more in the, you know, in the mood. Mm hmm You know? Mm hmm But that's on my shopping list. Yeah. Chili I'm peppers. Hitting, I'm hitting Walmart later on. <laughs> Get my Walmart list ready. <laughs> All right, another one is bananas. And I can truly believe that. I remember being on the Howard Stern show. Mm -hmm. And I remember they was doing like some out, you know, some little outskirts. And it was like they told me to peel a banana and do like a, a little blowjob on a banana. Because you see, as it looks like, what does it look like? It looked like a curved mm -hmm. penis, right? That's what it looks like. You know, some of you pretending to, you know, you know, just have a look, you know, what you mean? Don't bite it. <laughs> don't, don't bite it. But this is one of the flirt foods. It contains buffetin, a chemical that acts on the brain to increase happiness, self-confidence, and sex drive. So it ain't just the, the visual of it. It also, I'm going to eat me a banana tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> I don't eat bananas. Yeah, I'll eat bananas. No, I'll eat bananas. Well, you should. <laughs> All right, the next one is carrots. Carrots have strong, um, vibrous ingredients that supercharge the body and lead you to feeling of strong sexual drive. I did not know that with carrots. I thought it was just good for the eyesight. Mm. Mm, I eat a lot of carrots. Mm. Eat some more. Mm, wow. I did not know that. Like when I was doing this, I was like, wow, carrots. I like carrots, but I'm like, wow. Put that on my Walmart list. <laughs> and Clary Sage, it is known of the decreasing inhibition with the relaxing, euphoric, mildly intoxicating effects. So that's kind of like a, it's more like a, um, a herbal type okay. of thing, type okay. of sage. And that one. Okay, that's Flirt Foods. I hope y'all wrote that down. Y'all better go get some bananas. Get the Walmart for the clothes. Yeah, some chili peppers and carrots. Carrots. Okay. That carrots. All right, so y'all seduction foods. Y'all ready for this? Mm -hmm. So we we already, we flirted. We flirted. We got them a little hot and by now it's time to seduce them. So what foods are we going to give them to seduce them in these three stages of elements of aphrodisiac? All right, number one is oysters, which is mine. Mm -hmm. which is one of mine. It contains zinc, essential mineral for men needed to sperm production. Also released testosterone in women. Wow. Yes. Yes, you know what the next one is? What's that? Shrimp. Oh, I do some shrimp. Shrimp high in iodine, which is needed by the thyroid gland that regulates energy, including sexual energy. Do it matter if they deep fried? I mean, bro, brother's gonna eat some fried shrimp. Now, <laughs> if, if I get some fried shrimp and have some good sex, we we own it popping, right? <laughs> fried jumbo. Oh my goodness! All right, next chocolate. It includes caffeine and a plant substance called what's that? Fastest, but See, well, I, I cannot pronounce these words. It's P-H-Y-T-O-S-E-T-E-R-A-L. You got me. That mimics human sex hormones. Hmm. I think it's phytotestosterone. To, 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 woo, girl, you are so tongue tied on this one. Ginger. Okay. Ginger is good. Ginger. Ginger comes with the root of the plant and increases blood flow to the genitals. And both men and women. Okay. Yeah, olive. There's another one of mine. Olive one makes men more viral, while back while black ones are believed to increase sex drive for women. All right, so I guess I'm backwards because I do not like black olives. No, I love me some green olives, and it does it for me. So maybe that is my masculine energy that has taken over in that aspect like because black. I don't I don't do black olives well. Uh -uh. Tomatoes, known as love apples. 
At one time, they were forbidden by Puritans because of his reputation as a potent sexual stimulant. Mm -hmm. Asparagus, that's another one of mine. I love me some asparagus rich with potassium, calcium and vitamin E, all vital to increase hormone production. So as you see right here now, I'm, 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 I'm getting your hormones going right now in apples. Ever since the days of Milton Paradise Lost Apples have been known as the fruit of temptation. Back to the Bible. They're also filled with vitamins, minerals, and enzymes that stimulate sexual desires. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, so that's induction. So now we already, we got the flirt, so you know how to get them in. Mm -hmm. So we got the seduction on how to get a real nice thing. So what you think is next? The performance. Yeah. So what food did we need so it can make us sustain in that, right? All right, licorice. Licorice contains plant um, estrogens and stimulates the sex glands, bringing oxygen to female genitals 40 times faster. I did not know that. And look at here. Wow. I did not know that. Licorice. And actually, it's like that black licorice, which I don't like black licorice, which is black li licorice is the best. So they say black licorice is good for women, right? Right. They say black licorice is more good for women than what? Because that's, that's the right name for it. licorice. Because you lick it. <laughs> lick. <laughs> so that should be for men and women. All right, the top to cook, uh, pumpkin pie and pumpkin seeds. That's a performance. This is a performance. But yeah, the top continue to increase um, penile blood flow an average of 40% faster is pumpkin pie and wow. pumpkin seeds. Wow. That's something. Mm-hmm. All right, here's another good one. Cinnamon. Cinnamon. The sweet, spicy flavor of aroma has been used to aid in the treatment of impotency and proven to be sexual stimulating for men. Mm. Yeah, cinnamon. You know, there's so much stuff out there that, you know, ain't got to be going about all this by air. No, you don't. You got this right there in your kitchen cabinet. Right there in your kitchen cabinet. You probably don't even use cinnamon. Like if you ain't making no what, pumpkin so pie or French toast or... Uh, sweet potato pie, <laughs> girl. You better go get that and and and, and help because like I got a game for y'all too for that one too. Um, basil, basil is considered the sacred her herb of India. It awakens the sense, stimulate blood flow, and relieves fatigue. So I've been cooking with a lot of basil lately. <laughs> <laughs> I seriously have. I've been cooking with a lot of basil lately because, and that's the thing is when I finish this. I actually changed a, a lot, uh, added a lot of uh, different herbal ingredients into uh, to heighten different, you know, things that's going on in the bodies. Um, artichoke. Artichoke shared this sex vitamin, um, high in vitamin C, folate, magnesium, uh, phosphorus, which your lover, because it's fun to eat together. Like, I got an artichoke. I haven't really ate, uh, I, I ate the artichoke dip. Right, but I got this, and I'm going to try to make it a stuff a stuff artichoke. This one lady told me at the store today about it, but I brought it just to see because it's a visual thing too. Yeah. So I got something about shapely visual and celery. Celery is another powerful male hormone released through sweat glands to attract women. Wow, you know that? Yeah, put that on the Walmart list. <laughs> All right, so now that I'm telling you guys all of this about all of these things, there are different things that you can use. So you 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 trying to figure out, okay, so Naomi, you giving us these aphrodisiacs, you giving us this food. So what do we do? We just give them to our men, or we give them to our ladies who just feed them to them, whatever. No, have some fun with it. Like literally, have some fun with it. because food and sex, those who are the greatest pleasures known to mankind. You understand? So when we put them both together, those appetites because they both need to be fulfilled, right? So why not combine them in together? You know what I mean? Right. I understand. You know? So I want to give y'all some what I call food games. And they break it down. They break it down in so many different ways. When I saw some, well, actually, some of these things that I had already been doing, 
and was not well i realized what i was doing but i what i didn't realize what i was doing i didn't know how common that it was with a lot of people you understand what i'm saying for mm -hmm. it to be written into a book that i'm studying you know for it to be that right all right so here we go so uh no that's not it not it that's not it that's not it that that's not it he, he not it all right so full game so I'm, I'm getting ready to break it down with you so i got two of them for four play so it's a, actually it was so many in this entire course it was crazy so what i had to do is go through a few of my favorites that i have but this is not included in my tops but this is a few 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 few, few of my favorites that i had in this all right so these are food games of four play foods. Okay. You ready for this one? Let's do it. All right. So as I said before, what I say, chili peppers. Right, chili peppers. Pepper. So this is how y'all do the chili peppers. So I know I said chili peppers before, and I told you that was a flirt. That was a flirt food to do it. So you add that into your four play, and I'm getting ready to tell you how. Don't try to get it and just put it on and burn the shit out of him. Mm -hmm. Don't do that or her. But I'm getting ready to kick it down to you on how to really do it. All right, so hot chili peppers get the face, the face flushing, the heart pumping, the pores sweating, and the blood following towards the genitals. Have a contest to see who can eat the most chili peppers. The winner gets to have their orgasm first. Wow. <laughs> so you sitting there just, yeah, you're, you're just sitting there eating chili peppers and when it take off. <laughs> when it take off. All right, so another one is we said chocolate, chocolate delight, chocolate delight. Chocolate includes a plant substance called um, phytotesterol <laughs> that mimics human sex hormones. Share a box of assorted chocolates with your lover by selecting and feeding them to each other. If you guess the right kind of chocolate, you get a kiss. But if you're wrong, you get bit. All right, so kind of like do something kind of fun with that, you know, even with blindfolding each other. And that's what I like that. I like bl blindfolding, you know, with each other. There was a, um, when taking this course, there was a video that we had to watch. And I thought that video was very, very sexy. And it's something that I'm really thinking about doing. It had where it was a dinner party to sort of like that they had all types of aphrodisiac that was served there in dishes and things of that sort. But they had, um, it was a couple thing. It was a couples, all couples there, really set up, really beautiful, really nice. And they were blindfolded as they were feeding each other. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But then it was switch. Switch. Yeah, yeah, they was switch. And it was so, it was a very intimate, but it was very, it was very sexy okay. in the way that they were doing it with, with the food, um, with that. But yeah, that just got off a little topic on that one. But yeah, with chocolate, you know, do that. That's a nice party, though. Yeah, that is. That is. Yeah, that is. Um, the next one is the next one: food games with seduction foods. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna try this one with the um the oysters in hell. Um, the oysters contain zinc, an essential mineral for men, needed for sperm production, and it releases testosterone to men and women. Take turns sucking an oyster from its shell. Mm. Mm. The person who does it the most seductive, seductively wins the sex position of their choice. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's nice there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a nice one. Actually, that's on my tops. That's, that's on one of my top. All right, the shrimp feeder. Shrimp is high in iodine, which I said before, which is needed to for the thyroid gland um, that regulates energy, including sexual energy. Each partner should take a turn feeding the other shrimp. Be sure to lick, suck, and nibble the shrimp as well as your lover's fingers. The one who is most sexual wins one free fantasy. Mm -hmm. All right, so here's another one of my favorites. It's called the olive lipstick. I have no olives here. I have no olives here. Um, the green olives, I believe, to make men more viral, like we said before. So what you do right here is that you pretend, slowly outline your lips. See, I, I needed my olives. Mm -hmm. <laughs> slowly outline your lips with the olives that give your partner the olive lipstick kiss. You can also have your partner remove the, pl the 
pimento filling from the olive and put it on his or her finger. Then use it to outline your lips before sharing a kiss. Wow. Mm -hmm. And then a tomato pasty sensation. So as I said before, tomatoes are known as love apples, right? So you take the sliced tomatoes and attach them to your nipples like pasties and have your partner slowly eat them off, sucking and nibbling on the nipple along the way. Mm-hmm. Now this is seduction. That was seduction. All right, so here we go to Shapely Food. So remember when I poured out the little banana here and I told you that these are... Um, that not only is it for, for flirting, right. but it's also considered as shapely. There are several different um, foods that are shapely. <laughs> and I'll get ready to show y'all one. Wow. It's a cucumber. So as I was going uh, to the store today um, and <laughs> I saw these cucumbers and I'm like, oh, they were called English. They, they call English cucumbers. So I got two. I'm getting ready to show y'all. <laughs> These, right, these, the English, the English, the English, uh, the, this is one, and this is two. I have a thick one for the girth, and I have a long skinny one for the length. But these are what we call shapely foods that we can play the food game with. So either you can peel it, <laughs> you can keep it so whole. <laughs> wow. And you can do so many great things with these. But then I remember I had a cucumber. I said, wait, I got a cucumber at home. And I remember these are the American cucumbers. <laughs> Voila! <laughs> so y'all see this. <laughs> so Oh, so, 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 everybody won't go to England now. Huh? <laughs> Y'all won't be going to England. Book, book your flights to England now. When I saw this, I said, Are you kidding me? I've never seen a cucumber this big and this thick. And then I saw this one. And I'm like, Come on now. Like, Seriously, come come on now. <laughs> and you can do so many different things. I'm I'm telling y'all, I'm mad. You can do so many different things with these cucumbers. But animal, I'm just kidding. No, I'm not. But yeah, those are what you call shapely. Uh <laughs> it's called shapely. But as I said, so I'm about to break it down with the shapely with the banana. Here's a game. It's called the lick suck deep throat nipple on a banana to give your man a erotic visual sensation of what you can do with a penis so y'all know remember just open it up you know you peel it like this see this like this mm -hmm. right and then you put it in your mouth <laughs> you know what you do with it you put it in your mouth you can lick it up and down but this is um a shapely thing and the game is Lick, suck, deep throat, nibble with banana to give your man a, a visual sensation of it. Okay. That's the shapely. All right, the next one is a carrot. In the carrot can, you put a condom on it, and you do some other stuff with it. I can't say that all, but y'all know what to do with it. Uh, the vegetable kingdom pleasure, you know, such and such and such and such. And then we got the clam. So you lick around the edges of the oyster as if it was a vulva. So let me open this up for y'all because it do look like that. All right. Y'all see that? Can, can we see that? Yeah, we can see that. You know, so, so that look like it's so it's so wet. It's so juicy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that look lickable. It look lickable. lickable. It look lickable. Yeah. <laughs> so you lick around the edges and then you suck. You like a slurp. Mm -hmm. you, oh, that was real salty. That was really salty. And then the fig. I kind of like the, I don't like fig. But I kind of like the way that they said, they said, spread the fig apart with your fingers as if you spread in the, <clears throat> excuse me, and you use your mouth to make out with it as you suck the nipple to the fresh fruit, fruit centrally. Then you can have the real thing. Mm-hmm. Mm That's nice there. Mm-hmm. 
All right, so here go another one. This is a good one. This is the body food games. I got a few favorites on here. That's a part of my five, the ice landing. All right, so let me tell you something. When I was in my early 20s, I really thought I was doing something with the ice thing. You know what I'm saying? With the ice, you like the, the nipples, the, the what's the name, and, <laughs> and all of those things. <clears throat> and all of those things, you, you like that. You know what I'm saying? And um, that's a, never what I thought that it was a game. I just thought it was something that would be very, um, you know, erotic, especially when you, when you, you know, hard and you feel something different on you that's cool, you know, because your body is so warm right. from the intensity of the, you know, just like that. But that's what it said. Begin with ice and rub it up and down the lover's spine, behind their ears and down their neck, around their breasts, on the inside of the thighs and so on. So if they can handle this until it melts. So I think the best thing is remember that um, Spike Lee. She got happy. Was it she, she got happy? No, it was. Um, the Rosie, uh, what's her name? Right, that wasn't She Gotta Have okay. It. That was, um, oh my God, what was the name of that movie? Um, I remember the scene. I remember the scene. I can't tell you the movie. Because he said, for the nipples. What was the name of that movie? I got to come back. Oh, my God. What was the name of that movie? Okay. <laughs> okay we got to come back. But the next one is Cool Whip, which I've done. I've done the Cool Whip thing. That's one of my favorite things to do. It can get very, very sticky. Very, very sticky. Um, you can write the word sex or sexy with a can of whipping cream on your lover's body. And then the winner gets to lick it off. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then slip and slide. All right, so slip and slide is a poor flavor gelatin into the shower head. Wow. Turn it on hot. Turn the shower on hot. Listen to this. This is crazy. And take the most delightful, gooey, slippery, and sensual shower for your life. Wow. I don't know if I would want to do that. You have to get a plum afterwards. Do the right thing. Yeah. Thank you, big bro. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I want to do that. A lot of work. That's a lot of stuff that's in your hair. I don't know how you really thinking about hair. Yeah. All of your hair. Oh. Really? All oh, in your hair. All right. And another one is what I like. This is another one. Splashing. It's fulfill your wildest fantasy by covering your lover's body with messy foods such as mashed potatoes, gravy, spaghetti, meatballs, ice cream, custard, baked beans, and peanut butter, then eat it all. Mm. Okay, so let me tell you. Let me let me tell. You, I'm about to tell y'all what happened um, over here at Playboy Radio. It was uh, Jenny and uh, <laughs> it was their show, and they used to do the most craziest thing. She put peanut butter on her twat mm. on her hoo ha for somebody to lick it off. And that was really the first time that I've ever seen somebody lick some peanut butter off somebody's puss. Mm -hmm. The first time. The very first time. And that's when I really know these girls are wild, but I love them. <laughs> but they were wild. They were really wild. <laughs> All right, body art. Turn your lover's body into a canvas by eating your favorite foods off your lover's body. The game is to paint scene on any part of your lover's body with the food. And if they guess what it is, you can eat it off. If they can't guess what it is, then you must continue to paint until they can describe the artistic masterpiece. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. And there's another one of my favorites is hide the honey. Honey. Hide. Yeah, I even like that sound. Hide the honey. It said, decide who is going to be the hider and who is going to be the seeker. It said, the hider will be the receiver of pleasure lying naked on a bed while the seeker will put on a blindfold. You see, I love blindfolding. Mm -hmm. The hider must hide a dab of honey somewhere on their body and tell their lover to find it without using their hands. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that was the full body. So yeah, now y'all ready for the performance? Yep, yep. And what to do with some of these things? All right. So I, so remember I told you about the pumpkin seeds, right? All right. So they actually have one called Peter Peter Pumpkin Eater. 
Now, I don't know if that's where the soul came from or not. I hope not. But this is what they say. <laughs> it says, spread a slice of pumpkin pie between your lover's thighs and slowly eat it all up before you enter your next intercourse. Okay. So, but remember what it does, it, it, it increases the blood flow. Right. And you right, average of 40% faster. Pumpkin pie. Yeah, pumpkin pie. So I don't know what um Patty LaBelle, she just do sweet potato pie. She don't do pumpkin <laughs> pies. So we can't get an endorsement on that one. Let me put, let me put Walmart on there. <laughs> All right, here's another one of my favorites. Um, bind with vines. Because you know, licorice has estrogen in it. It's a stimulate for sex glands. So what you do is you tie licorice ropes around your partner's penis as you perform oral sex on him. For your reward, you get to have your orgasm first. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. And here's another favorite. This is the last one. Uh, yeah, this is the last one for this one. It's uh, Cinnamon Delight. All right. So let me let me tell you how to do this one. All right. So you dust a few drops of cinnamon behind your ear. Um, on your nipple and around your genitals, around, not on, around your genitals so that your lover can have a tasty treat when they explore your body with their tongue. Yeah, because remember that sweet, spicy flavor and aroma has been used to aid in the treatment of um, impotency and it's proved to be sexually stimulating for men. Okay. Yeah, so you mean you better go get you some cinnamon. You some cinnamon. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to come back I got my top five and some of the, and actually some of them are in here. They are in here. So I'm just going to repeat it all over again. Top five. Then we got, um, ask Naomi or we got, um, cause I took it to the social for a minute mm -hmm. with a social connection. We're going to do a quick break, come back. And then that's it. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. It's your girl, Naomi Banks here on ask Naomi bridging the gap. This is sexy is cosmetic. Our sponsor. Check it out. Hey, hey, it's your girl, D Goddess Naomi Banks, and Sexy Is Cosmetic is our official sponsor here at Ask Naomi Bridget the Gap. So you guys make sure you go by sexyiscosmetic.com and let them know Naomi sent you. Get a great discount. They are naturally 100% organic, vegan. They sell everything from soap to scrubs to everything for you to keep you sexy always. Sexy is cosmetics. Use the code Ask Naomi for ten percent discount. All right, all right, all right, all right. So we're gonna do Naomi's tip top five food. So I did have a nice little intro for Naomi's top, but it ain't coming up like I needed to come up. <laughs> so here we go. <laughs> All right, so that's Naomi Tops there. Like, I spent a lot of time on this. <laughs> All right, so my number one. I read it before, and it's the Vine the Vines. Um, and this is a new one for me. It's like one when I was doing the research on it. And actually, when I did my class on this, on this, I actually got a 96 out of this class. But I saw it with licorice. And I love licorice. I, I, I really do. And that Vine the Vine is something that uh, I thought that would be pretty, pretty cool. Like wrapping a, the licorice around your mate's penis mm -hmm. and eating it off or sucking it off or something like that. That's my number one um, food game with it. So mm -hmm. my number two, my number two is the ice landing. That's old school for me. You know, that's when you get the ice and you stimulate every part of the body. If it's the, the breast, the belly button, the lower back, around the penis, on the tip of it, all of those things. It will set an arousement that will get that blood flowing, ready to go. And you go into the whole next level. Mm -hmm. My number three, Cool Whip. That's another old school favorite of mine. We're getting whipped cream all the way through, just through the bodies, through everything. Try not the hair on the lips, through the body, the nipples, whatever. Y'all know what to do. 
Y'all know what to do. That's another good one that you can play games with, with that one. All right. My number four is the cinnamon delight. And this is mostly for your man. Because with the, the smell and aroma and them just eating it, it will help them get that arousal faster with that. So sprinkle a little bit something behind your ear so when he lick it, he get that taste of that sensation. Maybe put some on your lips. That sensation. Maybe put some here on your nipples. You get that sensation. Kind of like put it around, you know, blindfold him as they say. And let him search for, you know, what it is. All right. And my last one. I got to look for it. My last one. Let's hide the honey. I like that one. You put a little honey. I'll make sure I put my hair up, though. Make sure you put your hair up, ladies. <laughs> hide the honey. Put a little bit behind your neck right here. Behind here, behind the ear. Let him lick it a little bit. You know, just kind of guide him through. Remember, blindfold him. Give me a little disadvantage, kind of blindfold, let them smell, smell, blow, sip, mm. suck, all of those good things. <laughs> so that's the last one for that. But let me tell you what to do. The hider will be receiving the pleasure lane naked on the bed while the seeker will put on a blindfold. The hider must hide a dab of honey somewhere on their body and tell the lover to find it without using their hand. So that is my five. That is my five favorite food games. Like I said, um, several of them I tried. A few of them I haven't. It's new to me, but I'm, I'm definitely going to try those. That's, oh, that had honey is really, really nice. It's really, really nice. Mm. Mm -mm. I remember last week I was telling you guys about swinger clubs and things of that sort and, and all of that other good thing. I have something for y'all in a minute. I can't even share this. One. I'm not going to share this one. <laughs> I'm not going to share this one. So what we're going to do real quick, let me get my papers and stuff together. We're going to come back with a uh, Ask Naomi, a Ask Naomi letter. And then we're going to end this show. So let's take a look at Sexy as Cosmetic real fast. And then we're back with Ask Naomi letter. Hey, it's your girl, the goddess Naomi Banks. And Sexy is Cosmetic is our official sponsor here at Ask Naomi Bridget the Gap. So you guys make sure you go by sexyiscosmetic.com and let them know Naomi sent you. Get a great discount. They are naturally 100% organic, vegan. They sell everything from soap to scrubs to everything for you to keep you sexy always. Sexy is Cosmetics. Use the code Axe Naomi for a 10% discount. All right, so I just lied. I thought, sorry, because I said I was going to do Axe Naomi, but I, you know, I always want to show love before we leave out. I know there was a lot of comments there. We didn't really get to the comments like I wanted to today. So we want to just go to the comments right now and say, hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. I see you, Charmaine. Baby, I see you, Jeff. I see you, Ron. I think I see the beautiful gorgeous in there. I see, um, Spider Moose, how you doing, baby? How you doing? All right, could you hit the Spider Moose? He said chocolate is full of chemicals and sugar. Uh, go for cocoa. It has a relaxing vibe to it. You are absolutely correct. It surely, surely does. Um, I got me some right here. I was going to do something kind of different with. Can y'all see this? I don't want to break. Let me see. Hold on. Can y'all see this? So I was over here melting because I wanted to do something different with it. But uh, time got away from me, and I just did not do it. I'll do it another day. Uh, I see my uh, my bro, Super Lover. I thought I saw Alexander DeVoe in there. How you doing, Ruben? Uh, what that say? Show that for me. He said, anal and fruit is my fetish, especially eating it out directly from her. Mm -hmm. For real. Mm -hmm. For real. All right, Ruben. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here go another one for Ruben. <sighs> Naomi, I highly recommend Shia One Pros for Libido and Sex Drive. Check it out. It's sort of like a jam and jelly. Hmm. That sounds good. Pronounce it. Jam and jelly. I think about peanut butter and jelly. Get it on. <laughs> 
<laughs> Don't shake like that. Uh-uh. Hey, long nice YouTube. I see you. Hey, Javon. Hey, Ron C. How you doing, baby? Now, I just want to just say thank you all that came out. I saw the numbers going down. How you doing, Novin? Everybody coming out. Just make sure you share. Like T Brown, baby. How you doing? My Charmaine is always here. Hey, James. I see you, Mr. Jimmy. And I'm just trying to scroll down with Fess just to say thank you all before we get um, what's the name? Punta. Before we get to the Axe Naomi Latter. So I just want to continue to thank you for your support. Seriously, um, it means a lot. Mm -hmm. It means really a lot. And Mr. Joseph Tanner. Mr. Joseph Tanner has been a long, long time fan of mine. He has a lot to say. He's really long-winded in his text. <laughs> but I love it. I love it. I love it. All right. So we're going to go ahead to Axe Naomi Latter. <laughs> Naomi letter time. This is where my viewers will write in to me and I will give them my advice and I will open up for you listeners too. If you guys have any advice on this one, but this is a really good one. He said, I'm a big fan of your work and vlogs. I was wondering if it's possible to get out of the friend zone with someone you might be interested in. He said, keep up the good work. If you ever in New York after the pandemic is over, I would love the opportunity to meet you. And we just going to say Jay from NYC. That's what we're going to say. So I said, um, which I thought was pretty good. I actually did a video on this um, a few years ago about it. It's actually a guy that was dating a young lady that, well, he wanted to date a young lady that was in the same class with him. Okay. And they was like long distance. And he was trying to, you know, I told him the best thing is try to stay in the friend zone. But once that's, you know. But this is my advice that I gave to him. I said, no, being in the friend zone seems to be like you will never get the prize slash girl. But if you pay, pay close attention to your friend, you actually have more of an upper hand than the other guy out there. Ask yourself a few questions first before you move forward on moving out of the friend zone and into the lover slash relationship zone. One, are you their ideal mate or lover? And two, do you have all that they are looking for? You understand what I'm saying? Mm, yep. All right. Number three, are you willing to possibly lose a good friendship due to your interest in them on another, you know, mm -hmm. for that? All right. I said, if you answer yes to all of them, then let's move on to the next step. Start to show your interest in them by flirting, but being respectful and doing or giving little gestures that will spark that interest in you. And what I mean by that is like, you know, do something that you know that they like or what they've been. Because I, if if you that friend and they can talk to you about the friend, about their old relationship that they have with their boy, their boyfriends or whatever. And, you know, you might be better than that, that you can give that what they needed that they searching for. Then guess what? Do that. Mm -hmm. Show them better than tell them. Then once you start to show them, then you take your friend out to dinner and you sit down and you be honest and open about taking that friendship to another level and that's going into a sexual relationship or whatever you want to call it you know dating or whatever whatever but this is also what i said i said uh take your friend out to dinner and put it out there let them know how you feel about them and that you are willing to be their person lover slash partner also what i said is communicate with each other that you will remain friends first in a relationship and that means caring and being truthful and honest with each other. And lovers are secondary. And I don't know if you guys understand that, but the thing is that you have to be friends first before you can be lovers. And that's even in a marriage. You got to be friends first in there where you can sit down and be honest and talk to each other and see each other as individual. That's where the friends come up, seeing each other as individual. And we sit down and we talk. And then then that's where the love is at. You know what I'm saying? And that's where that respect comes from. And that's where all that secondary to love making and all of that come from, from there. You got it? You got yeah, it? Yeah. Oh, do you, you got something to say about it? Oh, no, that's, that's totally the point. You have to be friends first, you know? But, but what Ron say, Ron C says, 
friend zone is dangerous to mess with you know it can be it honestly it can it it can be but that's if the other person is on bullshit. can can we be honest because if you if you was friends with this person and you hear you hear you hear what they go through you hear what they're talking about with the dudes or the guys or the or the females or whatever and you know this so you know what they're not looking for right. you know what they're looking for so if you're not who they looking for then don't go there just because they got a fat ass or you you understand what i'm saying mm-hmm. and that's the problem we got to start to be honest with each other beloved and beautiful <laughs> oh uh better be like spider-man if you cross the friend zone line hopefully if it fails you can reel it back into after you crawl around I see what you mean in that. I, I I do. I see what you mean, and I guess that's why it has to be uh, that foundation, that friendship foundation, right. Right. you know, and, and be open with that communication on it, for real. You know, sometimes guys want to do a lot. You know, they want to be, they want to cross out of that friend zone and into that relationship zone, but don't know what it really takes to be in that. You know what I'm saying? Because right. we might go out and kick it and go here and there. There's a difference when you are in a relationship with that person Mm -hmm. that's why when you there you have to be honest about who you are you know what i'm saying even in that friend zone i believe every relationship that i have versus friends and everything they know how i am i'm like this all the way around there is nothing i'm very vocal i'm very honest i am very loyal i don't know shit no nothing but it all coming from a loving place (laughs) And I know a lot of they like I can't be in no relationship with her ass. She too demanding. Yes, I am very demanding, but I would give you everything. <laughs> but I'm very demanding. You know what I mean? So that's the thing is, don't just listen to what they say halfway. You know what I'm saying? Make sure that you are. That's why I said make sure you have everything that they need and that they want out of a relationship, and don't just become and sniffing like the other people do. You understand what I'm saying? Because that's what don't make a good friend. When you know what's been hurting her, and then you're going to come and add on to it, pretending and faking. Coming with the representative we were talking about a few weeks ago. There you go. Seeing if you can really hit it. (laughs) You right, Ron. Yes. Exactly. 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 All right. So I want to thank y'all. It is the end of the show. It is the end of the show. Again, thank you so much for coming out. Uh, I'll see y'all next week. But before I go, I just want to show y'all this big ass strawberry because it was, I was going to do something with these. I was going to see, you know, if me eating a strawberry with some Western name mom, I was going to throw one over there the way Matt, Matt, I'm going to do right now. Throw one over there at Dog Pound Mike Mike and have them eat it and let me know it's big and let me know if, uh, If he got any kind of um, sexual bulge over there. Do you have a sexual bulge over there? Mm-hmm. I got hit Walmart first. <laughs> <laughs> I came up with Walmart. <laughs> yes, and actually, we didn't even speak about strawberries. Like yeah, I said, I had... asked about strawberries. Yeah. Like, I didn't even talk about that. I, I mean, the show kind of got away from it. But here's another one. Let, let, me, let, me, let me do this one. The mushroom is another one. This is more of a shapely. And you see why? It's because, you know, on the tip of the head of the man, what is that? It's shaped like a mushroom. Mm -hmm. So that's one of them right there. But thank you guys. (laughs) Like seriously, because I could go on and on and on about this. And I, like I said, it gets deeper. It really do. It, it gets so much deeper. And we just don't have enough time right now. So when we start to take these shows longer, we're going to bring this back in. Yeah. And I'm going to have some guests in here that we're going to be doing all kinds of stuff with them. But again, I want you guys to be good to one another and yourselves. And always keep it sexy. I'll see y'all next week. It's your girl, the goddess Naomi Banks, here with Dog Pound Mike Mike. And yep, yep. Ask Naomi Bridging the Gap podcast everybody hey it's the goddess naomi banks and i hope you enjoyed that last episode of ask naomi bridging the gap and if you did please like subscribe press that notification button as well as comment i 
I'll see you next week. Keep it sexy.